What's up, people? Adam Hunter here. Yes, hope you guys are doing well. I'm uh, giving you another podcast because I'm on Rockfin, R O K F I N, rockfin.com forward slash Adam Hunter, and they're making it possible for me to give you podcasts almost every day of the week. Just go to rockfin.com forward slash Adam Hunter and endorse me. It's 10 bucks a month, and you'll get so many podcasts from me, from Ben Askren, from Front Row Brian, from Israel Martinez, you're going to get Nick Diaz and stuff, all kinds of great stuff. Chael Sonnen has a page up there. It's awesome. I want to thank our sponsor, Speedweed. Marijuana is legal in California. You shouldn't have to leave your house to get it. They will deliver it right to you. Just go to speedweed.com, at Speedweed. They got edibles. They got marijuana. They got THC sex lube. They have vape. They have pens. That will get it all to you. Get the weekend box. It's amazing. Go to speedweed.com. Follow them at Speedweed. They have great stuff. Listen, today, I got two amazing guests on the podcast. This guy, Alonzo Menafield, is undefeated. Undefeated light heavyweight. Nobody's got out of the first round, out of the second round with him. He's eight fights, eight stoppages. And this guy has been to like, when he was growing up, he went to about 15 to... 20 group homes, juvenile hall. He couldn't read till he was 13. He got taken in. Then he almost made the NFL. I think he actually did make the NFL. And now he's fighting. He's fighting in Minnesota next week. And he's, he's a beast. And he's got an amazing story. Also, Anthony Christodoulou, uh, who you might remember. He was in the UFC. He's a great fighter. He started his career 0-3. He started 0-3 and made it all the way to the UFC. He's from Greece. And he's a great guy. And uh, we're going to catch up with him. So thanks for listening to the podcast and hope you enjoy the show. Hello. Hey, we're talking to Anthony Christodoulou. How are you, man? How you doing, brother? All good, all good. Did I just fuck up your name really bad or what? No, no, you did it pretty good. I got to say, I was impressed. Oh, nice, you man. You didn't call me Christobulu or Christolulu, you know? Yes, totally. Totally, man. <laughs> Not bad. So how are you, man? What's going on? All good, man. All good. I'm in Athens, Greece right now. Nice. Uh, yeah, but you caught me on the... I'm on a little bit of a hiatus, taking a little break from work and chilling, hanging out with the family. That's good. Regular That's stuff. Good. Yeah, man. I was, um, I was, I was always been a fan of yours. I was always like, uh, you know, I was, always, I was rooting, always rooting for you. And um, I, I, I started watching some of your fights last night again. Did you start doing any kind of MMA when you were in Greece? Yeah, actually, I started doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu when I was in Greece. Uh, I was always a big fan. I was watching MMA from like UFC one, so my my stepdad would bring over pro wrestling tapes. I was a huge pro wrestling fan when I was a kid. So he, whenever he came back from the states, he'd bring over pro wrestling tapes. And uh, accidentally, I got the UFC one tape mixed in there <laughs> with a bunch of other like WCW and WWF, you know, uh, videos. And I watch, and I was like what the fuck is this? This is insane. I fell in love with it. There was no such thing, obviously, here. And, uh, yeah, once I got into high school and I was, I was, you know, being rowdy and stupid as always, I just found a jiu-jitsu class with a pro ball coach, and that's how I started. Was there any wrestling over in Greece? There was wrestling, but one, the, here they train in uh, – Roman Greco and freestyle. There's right. not the folk style wrestling that you know, and there's no like really kids college program. So, a lot of times the people that were in wrestling were like uh, Georgian, Russian, Romanian. A lot of people that had come from countries that had like a wrestling background. So the neighborhood I lived, I didn't really have any wrestling around me. Got it. Now, uh, uh, question off topic: How come everyone says that Greek women like it in the butt? Is that true? Will you? You're from Greece. Will you just kind of? Confirm or deny I think this? I, 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 don't, I don't want to say too much, you know, because there's going to be some Greek girls coming after me, but I can confirm that I've, this is true for many people I know, you know? <laughs> don't want to say too much stuff here. Now, is that... You said some I stuff mean, there, Adam. I said some stuff too, Shay. Of course. Now, is that is that just regular birth control? They just anal and that way they don't get pregnant? Or 
yeah, you know, it, it's uh, well, you know, they get to keep their virginity supposedly in their in their head, and they uh, also keep birth control. Right. You know, it's old school Safeway, you know, villager style. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Of course. Now you're 13 and seven. Um, you won your last fight, but you haven't fought since. It's been about a year and a half. How come you haven't fought? Well. To be honest, after the UFC, uh, I was pretty much done with fighting because for me, my my two performances in the UFC were like, well, let's not share it. They were terrible, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, well, look, this this kind of sucks. You know, I'm, I didn't perform to even close to my best, and uh, I have like more excuses than you can name. But all those things aside, I didn't perform well. So I was kind of done with fighting, and I took another fight outside of the UFC when I was dead broke. Like, I was dead broke. I had made a couple big uh, big mistakes with my decisions with my money, thinking that it was safe somewhere that it wasn't. Long story short, I had to get a surgery. I had to pay for that. And then after, I was left with, like, zero money after the UFC. And they offered me this, ins- ins- like, ridiculous amount of money to fight this guy at uh, Middleweight in Russia. And uh, so I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll just take it. You know, I, I was all four weeks out of surgery on my knee. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to take it. I know what the deal is here. I'm just going to go. I mean, they call me four weeks after surgery. We know what's going on here. Let's just go get this paycheck and go home. And I, I, after I lost that, I just started going full into being a, a coach. You know, I became I became a coach. And I became like a personal trainer. I started having like a, a pretty good amount of clientele. And I, my business was going well. I just did one more fight after that just for the sake to prove that, you know, I still had it in me. So I did a title fight at 145 pounds here in Greece. I did a comeback against the champion, and I won by a third round where I could choke, and then I just went back to my business. I started training a top 10 pro boxer, Joe Fournier. Got it. And then this is in Greece you're, 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 you're living. Well, yeah, I was living in Greece, but uh, I've, as I started training Joe Fournier, uh, we moved around from to like LA, Miami, New York, Vegas. You know, he's a he's an entrepreneur and uh, also was a boxer, and I was his coach for the past eight months. So uh, yeah, we've been traveling around the world together and uh, trying to get some big fights going on. And in that time, I also started gaining some uh, pretty high level clientele. And I got I got lucky enough to be able to train some guys like uh, Usher and Afrojack and things oh, wow. like that. What's it like training Usher? Oh, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. He's been, you know, he's a cool guy. He's a lot of fun. He's super, super skilled, super skilled, like in anything he does. You know, you could tell he has a success mindset. Uh, I really like the way that how he knows how to move. He's from the da- dancing and, and you know, hang around Usher. How, how bad could it be? <laughs> now, are you training him in, ju- in jiu-jitsu or boxing? Uh, boxing, really boxing. I'm like, I, I, obviously, I'm a jiu-jitsu black belt. That's like where I started my whole MMA career. But actually, as a coach, I've had a lot more success uh, in boxing. Now, are you, a, be- yeah. Now, you a black belt under Henzo Gracie? No, my black belt is under Jonathan Novais. I was training at Henzo Gracie's for a couple of years when I was living in New York City back when I was fighting. Right. Because I would move around. You see, the thing is, when I was fighting, man, I didn't have re- like a one stable coach. Like Dino Spencer in the, from the History Gym in Miami was my mentor. And because I was just trying to find my way around, I didn't, know, I didn't have a manager. I didn't see how the hell I was going to get in the UFC. I was like, I'm just going to travel from gym to gym everywhere I can, take any opportunity, try to make as many connections as I could. That was my mindset. If I could make as many connections as I could, one of these connections will be able to help me come in and, you know, be getting better over time. So I've been kind of a nomad my whole career. Yeah, I saw that you were training an American top team. You had Matt Brown in your corner for one of your fights. Uh, What was that like? Oh, man, ATT was fantastic, truly. Like, I, I... one of my biggest disappointments, I didn't represent what an amazing team they are. Like, uh, they have their coaching staff is, is unbelievable from top to bottom. Mike Brown is not only an unbelievable coach and athlete, but also as a person. And he breaks the game down like he breaks MMA down as it's a sport of MMA, which is, is it's quite different. Like, it's really hard, hard to find coaches that have a, that level of experience and break it down that way. And I think you see it with all these fighters 
coming out of ATT at the moment, like how skilled they are and how unique their their system is. If you look at guys like Marshad Bektik, now I know he's training at TriStar, but when he was training with Mike Brown as well, he was just dominating, smashing people. Even my friend uh, and training partner, Lazar Stoyadinovich, when he was training with Matt Brown, you could see the improvements in his MMA grappling. Did you ever train with Colby Covington? I have trained with Colby many, many times. Did you know, like, back then he was going to be as good as he is now? I had remember after one training with Colby, we were doing uh, wrestling rounds with Colby, George Masvidal, and uh, Nate Corey. And there was the four of us, and we were doing, like, uh, one guy in the middle and keep rotating. And Colby Covington was so ferocious with his, his wrestling that I th- I remember thinking I, I this guy cannot can't be stopped man like I was about to throw up and I was pretty I was pre- pretty good cardio I could not get get him to stop I remember how many shots I would I would sprawl try to fan get under because every time I thought I was good he just would n- be so relentless that at some point it was like the inevitable doom was coming. <laughs> Dude, I, I watched some of your. I mean, your fight with uh, uh, what's what's his name with um Holtzman. It said that you got up to two twenty before that fight, and then fought at one fifty five. How did that happen? Look, I I used to. I generally I had a problem with uh <laughs> with controlling my weight. Obviously, you know the the cookies and the shoved in the face. You know, this is a problem. <laughs> but. Yeah, I do. look. I when I started fighting, you got to remember, like when I when I dis- decided at 17 years old that I'm going to leave my house and I'm going to move to the United States to become a professional fighter. I was 265 pounds. Wow. At five, I was only five six at the time. Wow. 265, five six. So I I started training. I lost like the first uh, 60, 65 pounds. Uh, probably. Saved my life right there. Plus for sixty five pounds, and I went into I went to the states and I started traveling around Chicago because I had uh, my stepfather uh, at the time had his his uh, his children in Chicago, so I went out there with by them, and uh, I would go to gym to gym to gym, and I met Dino Spencer, and I went to every gym, and every gym I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be a UFC fighter, and they were like, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, we have like ultimate fries and cheeseburgers. Yeah. Uh, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. You look like you're the, you're the McDonald's free giveaway champion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, forget about your UFC. So like, I run, I'm like, no, no, no. But Dino was like, he, he's a character and a half. Dino, you know, he's like straight up from like a an old Italian mob movie. He's hilarious. The slick back hair. But he's like, all right, cool. You can come in. I was like, look, I don't really got money for the gym. Can I be, Can I uh, work as a janitor? I'll clean up the gym if I can get my free membership. And he, he was like, yeah, come on in. He just took me under his wing, and I just started going. I lost. I mean, my first, Most of my fights are actually at 145 pounds. Yeah, you lost your first three fights and kept going. And then, and then the fact that you made the UFC is amazing. That's unbelievable, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And to be honest, though, the crazy thing is actually I have four fights before those fights that they're just not on my record. Because back when I was fighting in Illinois, yeah. I was fighting in like Wisconsin, Indiana. I was fighting around the Midwest. Well, a lot of the states weren't regulated. And we we're fighting in Indian casinos. So I have fights with full blast elbows to the ground. And they're like in some sites are considered amateurs. And other fights are considered exhibitions. And some fights, they don't, some places they don't even have them. Well, I mean, the fact that you went 0 3 as a pro and then made the UFC is just like, that's to me, like, that's like the ultimate Rudy story. Most people that go 0 3, 0 1 quit or 0 2 quit. You went 0 3 and then you won your next eight. I mean, that's unbelievable, man. I appreciate it. And it was rough. Like, I remember. Uh, when I, when it was happening, you know, I, I was going through like a pretty depressive state. Like, uh, I was I was really really poor in Miami when it was happening. I'd moved to Miami to be with my coach Dino. Uh, but at the time, he was building his gym. I didn't have a job. Uh, I didn't have fights. I had this idea that I thought, well, well, once I start getting fights, I'm gonna start getting more and more fights. I don't have to get a job. I started. That didn't happen. I kind of got out of shape, and then I would got a last-minute fight out of desperation and need for money. I took it. I fought Jared Sanders, 
And then he beat me, and after he beat me, I, like, it crushed my confidence. Like, I hadn't lost. I'd, lost. I'd won four fights in a row. I'd won Nagas. I'd won all these tournaments. And I was like, God damn, I, that's it. I lost my first fight, and that kind of broke me. And I tried to make a comeback, and I got cut. I fought against John Ardellani. He cut me, and I, I went back. I went back home. I went back to Greece afterwards, and I was like, I was looking at all my friends, and they were just, like, getting jobs and, you know, becoming regular people in society. And I was like... I couldn't, I had like, walk, I couldn't go out with them. I couldn't go eat around them. Like unless somebody was buying me food because I had no cash. And I was like, man, fuck this. I'm done with this, you know? Yeah. And then Dino's like, come on, let's get one more in. So I take this fight against Jason Fizzlehurts. And we have like this, I mean, watching it now, going back in time, it was just, it was horrendous. But <laughs> I watched it at the time. I was, I, I, I felt that I won. I still feel that I won that fight. But it, was, it gave me a split decision loss. And I'm like, fuck this i'm done i'm like okay i gave it everything i got it's over you know well how much more can i do like at some point you can't just keep doing the same thing and failing so i came back to greece and uh, like as an attempt to like okay i'm gonna go back go to my country live my life and you know just do a regular thing and as i got here as a stroke of luck this company called GSC, the Greek Fighting Championships, they decided to, they're going to put some money in them. And man, man, it was blowing up at that point, about 2011. And uh, they, they said they asked me if I wanted to fight. And they gave me a guy that was 7-0 and as my opponent. And I'm like, you know what? I don't got nothing to lose. I'm like, I'm fucking 0-3 on the share dog. I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bum to bum fighters. You know? so like, <laughs> like, like, I'm like, there's no... There's no losing here. I'm how bad could it get? Like if I lose the guy seven zero, congratulations, you yeah. joined the club. You know, zero and four, zero and three, it ball sucks. Yeah. So, so I'm like, fuck it, and I just went for it, man. I started getting promoted, and they started like looking into me. I started building up some confidence because of that, and I started sparring with guys, and I was like, man, I'm smashing these fucking guys here. I'm like, like maybe I'm gonna, maybe I'm gonna smash, and then I won. I remember as soon as I won. Like, I, I went with my cousin backstage, and we were like, man, we just got to do this another 10 times. We're going to be in the UFC. And I was like, fuck it. Let's go 100%. Let's get everything in. Look at that, man. And now you're, you're you know, now you're running gyms, and you're training Usher and Skill Rex, and you're getting tons of pussy, and life is good, man. Know, you, I'm gonna let you add the extras. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get in so much trouble here. This guy here is gonna get me in trouble. What's going on? What's going on? I mean, do you have a girlfriend or a wife? Or no, 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 not not now. Not, not now. Not now. Not now. Potentials. Potentials. A lot of potentials. A lot of potentials. I'm sure Greece is probably <laughs> unbelievable. You probably you living uh, the life, man. It's, it's not. It's not a bad life. You know, it's not a bad life. I didn't come. I don't come back here all the time by accident. Of, of course, of course. Now, so where can people find you on Twitter, or Instagram, or what? Yeah, you can just find me at Team Tony One Forty Five on Twitter and at Tony Christodoulou on Instagram. You guys can find me in there. Follow my uh, hopefully interesting story. It was unbelievable. I travel the world. I, w- I want to buy the rights to the the, uh, the uh, movie. Honestly. Um, uh, man, I've, <laughs> I hope one day, one day, hopefully. Wait, we're gonna we're gonna do it. I'm I'm opening right now too. I'm about to open a brand new fight promotion here in Greece. Oh, nice. I'm gonna promote it. Yeah. And uh, we're really going to try to push the young talent here. I'm going to try to give back a little bit to the Greek MMA community and try to give kids chances that I got to make it to the UFC, you know? That'll be, now, do, the, do you have to speak Greek? Because otherwise, I'll go down there, I'll be the commentator. So, look, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're definitely probably going to have an English and Greek. So Let me know. Down, I'll bring you out. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. 100%. I'm in. Well, uh, it's not it's not going to be in during the summertime, though, the events. That's the only bad part I got to give you. The, the bad news. Unless you want to come out from now and just hang out with me. I don't care. Out. I don't care when it is. I just, I just want to be there. OK, doesn't All matter. Right. Well, yeah, yeah, you definitely do it. Well, thank you, Tony, yeah. man. It was an honor talking to you and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Take talk care, later, brother. Hello. Hello, it's Alonzo. Yeah, this is Alonzo. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you doing, man? Did I wake you up or something? Yeah, I was taking a nap. Nice. Is everything okay? Yeah, everything's fine. Getting ready. I, I'm training at 7. So nice. I, I got... Well, you got a big fight coming up in Minnesota next Saturday night. You're fighting a guy, Paul Craig. Uh, what do you know about Paul Craig? Uh, I know that he's a ground guy and uh, a teammate that fought him already. 
You already fought this guy? Yeah, a teammate of mine had a oh, fight. Oh, a teammate him. fought him. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it seems like a lot of his wins are by submission. And you haven't had a fight go past the first round. Or you have a couple in the second round. You just knock everybody out. But are you worried about uh, this guy submitting you? Have you been bringing in some good jiu-jitsu jiu guys and stuff? Uh, yeah, we've been working on counter. And uh, I've been, you know, hitting the button on cardiovascular to the extreme. So I ain't, I'm not worried about him at all. Uh, I, I plan to go in there and... And you know, make it my kind of fight. Nice. Now I feel like you're eight and zero, eight stoppages. Nobody's lasted uh, the third round with you, but people aren't talking about you yet. Does that bother you? Because I feel like you're the best kept secret in the heavyweight division. I feel like you're the guy right now, but people are overlooking you. Oh, you're right. Uh, no, no, it doesn't bother me at all. You know, I, I always look at it like I'm climbing the ladder. So, you know, it's good. With, it's all good with me. Uh, I, I prefer them. Not to bother me too much. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a comedian, and I feel like I'm overlooked. Like, I, like I feel like I'm a funny, badass dude. People keep talking about every other bit, and I'm like, so I can relate to you, man. I feel like me and you are a lot alike in a lot of ways, except that you had a much harder, right. harder life. But I'm just saying that, like, we've, you know, just. Uh, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, because because you're a you're a badass, man. I mean, you just you just knock everyone out. It's awesome. It's it's great. It's great to see. It, it is. It's great to see, man. Um, I also think you have a future in public speaking, man. I mean, I just want to remind everybody about this guy's life, okay? You, you were putting, what, 12, 14 foster homes as a kid? Yeah, a whole lot of them. Ju juvenile detention centers. Your father, yeah, yeah. your father left when you were a kid. Your mom was on drugs. I mean, you couldn't even read till the age of, of 13, 14 years old. I mean, you had no, yeah. you had no advantages growing up, none. And here you are undefeated heavyweight in the UFC. Yeah, yeah, it's a fairy tale, right? It really is, man. Cool. I mean, I, 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 and you have a hot wife, and you got two kids. You're like living the dream, man. Yeah, I had a newborn, too, and I got three. Oh, nice. Congratulations. How old is the, uh, the uh, new one? Yeah. Two months. Two. She's going on three. Oh, is she keeping it? Boy or girl? Girl. First girl. Hey, I have a, I have a uh, 10-month-old girl. Oh uh, yeah! Congratulations. Oh, thank you. I, is uh now how are you sleeping tonight? Oh, I, I sleep in a different room sometimes when I have to, but you know I sleep good. She she helps me out in the sleep department. It, is your wife breastfeeding? Yeah, yeah she breastfeeds. So that's pretty good for us. Now, nah, now, but isn't it isn't it hard though? Like sometimes your wife will breastfeed, and then she hands you the kid, and then the kid goes for your nipple, and like you can't, and you feel like she's mad at you. Yeah, right. It's like, I can't give you my nipple. You know, I try, but I'm like, there's no milk in it. <laughs> That's how I feel. I feel like I've been set up here. Like the baby kept getting mad at me, but I was teaching her that men are gonna let you down. So that that's good. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, but. So uh, now, when you, how many juvenile halls did you go to? Uh, I believe it was uh, one, two, three times. I've been to juvenile hall. Now, how how come you went there? Uh, uh, well, I think two times for stealing um, from a store, and another time for fighting. Oh my god! Uh, some kid, some kid in a group home called. Uh, he pressed charges on me, and I went to juvenile hall. Oh my god! Now, did like juvie help at all? Yeah, it helped the last time because I was a little bit older. Uh, when a kid, after I was fighting him, called the cops on me and then pressed charges. And then after that, you know, I, I said, you know, I got to get a little smarter, you know, because I'm going to be in prison. I don't I don't think I like being in a can because I'm claustrophobic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did you, did you, you have like, okay. did Juvie Hall have like, did you have like your own cell there? Nah, you, you share a cell w with the one. Um, but you know they put you in like a little room and they lock you in there. Oh my so, god! Just yeah, just a notion of someone locking you in or something. I'm like, oh man, I couldn't really have that. So wow, I, I definitely get up. And then there was a then there was a really nice man who still still works the place named Azenwa, and you and your brother yeah that one and you and your brother convinced him to adopt you. Yeah, yeah, my brother talked to him and convinced him, and then, yeah, we just bonded, and he took us in. 
I'm like, crazy, man. He just took his hand. Now, I mean, you, you didn't threaten to beat him up if, like, he didn't? You were like, yo, you said I did to that guy in juvie. You better adopt us? No, <laughs> no, no. I, did. I didn't threaten him. Actually, we actually got in a fight, um, but he, he got so much love for, for me and my brother that he, he kept it, you know, kept us over there with him and kept trying to help us and, you know, just be in our lives and love us. Oh, my so God. Definitely. Big up, big up to him. And then you couldn't even read till you were 12. But was it hard learning how to read at, like, age 12 or 13? Well, I mean, I couldn't read on the level I should. Um, but, you know, God made sure that it was clarity and I caught up to my level. Um, because, you know, no one really put emphasis on me, you know, actually reading. My mom is from Belize and she don't know how to read, so she never really, you know, never cared about education. So I was just going through the system, like, just no one caring. So Darwin just, he just cared. And then basically I caught up and then, yeah, I was able to, you know, just fall right into like my academic level. Wow. So, I, cause I'm thinking about adopting yeah. two huge black kids that are 14. Cause maybe they'll make the NFL or MMA. I mean, like that's <laughs> right. I mean, is there any way that I could adopt? Right. Can I adopt you now? Is there any way? I mean, I know you're a little older, but is it? <laughs> Me. <laughs> is it, I'm just saying, like, it, it seems like, wow, that's crazy. Now, um, yeah. I mean, this is like, it's kind of like the blind side, but like of the MMA version. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> the thing is, though, he, he doesn't even care about football or M M MMA. He just wanted me to be in a, into academics. He, he, he would rather for me to be uh, getting a PhD. Wow. So when did you actually start training in MMA? Uh, 2011 or 11, 12, it's 2012. -ish. And you had no ground game, no wrestling, no jujitsu. Were you getting worked on the uh, mat? No, no, I was a linebacker, so I was I had had to stand naturally. You know, I was naturally strong, so that worked for me. So you know, I learned some jujitsu first, and I learned Muay Thai. Wow. And uh, yeah, so she wrote. Damn. So here you are. You're fighting in Minnesota. Next Saturday night, which, which I also think it's bullshit how the UFC, they should, the UFC should do a whole thing about you. I mean, to me, you are the quintessential American dream. It really is like, and you're a nice guy. Like they say at your gym, they call you the cuddly bear, a teddy bear. Uh, like white girls throw themselves at you, but you, you don't even like, t you know, look at them. <laughs> like I heard you leave the gym and there's like 30 chicks just like, oh my God, take me home. You're like, sorry, I'm married. I got, I got kids. Is this, is this true? Right. No, yeah, I definitely get out of there. I, I keep, you know, the arrow straight. I got white kids, and I know what it is I need to do. So I, I definitely keep it straight See, and, you know, just do that. And the UFC has recently, they just did a little story on me, and they've been showing me some appreciation and some love. So It's about time. It, it just, yeah, just a matter of time, and I'll definitely be noticed. And you never got into any kind of drugs or anything? Oh man, I did it all, man. All kinds of drugs. It just when when I started taking MMA serious, I just said, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna change my life. I'm not gonna be to do you know working at the nightclub with you know just getting by because I make good money at the nightclub. I'm gonna basically pursue something that I can look at and be proud of. And uh, yeah, I just you know switch it all around, man. I was like three years ago, and uh, I just been you know grinding ever since so before that you're doing like like cocaine and molly and man. weed and yeah yeah i definitely did it all man <laughs> cocaine um weed drinking uh yeah everything man you know just pretty much being a crazy person but now you're clean and sober nothing nothing not even cb not even cbd drink Have you said what? Not, not even cbd or <laughs> A little CBD oil, yeah, I, I tried that. I mean, it, it does nothing for me. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't do that at all. Yeah. Got it, got it. Look at you, man. You're killing the game, bro. Killing the game. So. Uh, yeah, just a you flick it, boom, and you go. Now, after you knock this guy out, what are you gonna say in the octagon? Are you gonna call anybody out? Are you gonna call out the winner of uh, of Greg Hardy versus the guy Juan? I mean, who you? Who do? You... <laughs> no, no, no. I'm light heavyweight. They're heavyweight, but uh. I, I don't know, man. I'm basically going to just, uh, you know, tell them what it is that I am a guy that's fairly new to the MMA world. Um, I got some special abilities, 
and I'm just going to, you know, gain my experience. And whenever they give me the, the fight, I'll, I'll basically take it. Um, but, you know, I have a list on who I want to fight and who I have on my mind, and, you know, I'll present it to them, you know, like text messages or whatnot, and then we'll see if they give me a fight. Why don't you have your manager or your trainer give you the list and then just read it out? In the octagon, it'll be like like a Christmas list, like the things you want, you know. <laughs> right, that that is actually a good idea. I, I will consider that. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, you heard it here first. So, where can people follow you? Uh, well, I do the the uh, Instagram, which is Alonzo Minifield MMA, and then Twitter is Alonzo Minifield. Uh, so if they want to follow me, just follow me on O, and uh, that, that's pretty much it. I love it. Well, thank you, and have a good weekend. All right, you too. Thank you very much. Take care. Well, that was the uh, podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Okay, if you did, tell everybody how much you were enjoying Rockfin, R-O-K-F-I-N dot com forward slash Adam Hunter. Tell everyone to endorse me. You're going to get tons of content. Thank you guys so much and take care.